Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Wednesday, April 29th, 2015. I'm Darren McBreen. And I'm Rob Dew, co-hosting. And here's a look at what we have coming up. Tonight, the Baltimore Police Department floats a conspiracy theory that black gangs are coming for them. But black people in Baltimore are forming lines to protect the police. And we'll be joining InfoWars reporters live on the ground in Baltimore for updates. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Thousands of police and National Guard troops are on the streets tonight in Baltimore, Maryland, in an effort to rid the city of dangerous and violent protesters. This in the aftermath of the death of 25-year-old Freddie Gray, who died last week after suffering injuries he received while in police custody. Here's what we know so far. On Sunday, April 12th, Freddie Gray became the latest victim and what has become an epidemic of police murders of American citizens. He was viciously attacked by Baltimore cops, and his arrest was captured on video. The beating was not captured on video, only the arrest. But the video shows the officers picking up Freddie Gray from the ground. His leg is clearly broken. He has little control over his body, and he is in obvious pain as the cops drag him across the road and dump his body into the back of a police van. Medical professionals and an ambulance were not immediately called. Police records show that the arrest took place at 8.45 a.m., but an ambulance was not called until a half an hour later at 9.24. Freddie Gray was then hospitalized in critical condition and in a coma with a shattered vertebrae, a broken spine, a broken leg, and a crushed larynx. He died a week later when doctors attempted emergency spinal surgery. The Baltimore police are reviewing the case. Six of the cops involved have been suspended with pay, and no more details have been released to the public. So nobody knows exactly what happened in the back of that police wagon, and we don't know exactly how Freddie got all those injuries, but we do know this. That is the Baltimore Police Department. They will be investigating themselves. And I tell you who's not very happy about that, and that's Freddie Gray's family. They want the Department of Justice and the FBI to take over the investigation. They don't trust Baltimore PD's own internal investigation. And Rob Dew, we were talking earlier how it looks like the police are buying time right now. They're, they're trying to get their story straight. Do you think we'll ever find out what really happened to Freddie Gray? I don't know if we'll find out what happened to him. They're going to say he died as a result of his injuries is what's, what is going to come out. And they're going to release that report internally on Friday. But then, you know, the public is obviously pushing for it to be released on Friday. But we could see a whole new... Uh, uh, backlash coming from people as, as soon as that's released. So that's definitely not a good thing. It's taken them a long time to do this. I got an email from a guy who was a, a former cop, and he said they would put people in the back of vans like that and then drive around, sometimes slam on their brakes, make hard turns. And that was to kind of rough them up. Uh, it, it never resulted in any of these guys dying, but they said they did use that as a tactic for guys that they really didn't like. So this guy, you know, Freddie Gray, he had a, uh, he had a, a switchblade on him. And he was, they say he was running from the cops. And they said he looked suspiciously at a cop and then kind of ran off. And that's why they went after him. So maybe he had history with the cops. They said he has a criminal record. So maybe this is one of those guys that they said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to teach this guy a lesson. Um, but it's not clear uh, whether they, they put him in the seatbelt. Nobody knows any of that. So it is going to be interesting when the, the, the report comes out. I don't know if that will be the truth, though. Well, like I said, they are investigating themselves and you know, that's a shame. You know, I'll tell you what the, the community would like to see and the most of the protesters, they want these cops arrested. They want them thrown in jail and they want them charged with murder and they'd like to see someone other than the Baltimore Police Department do the investigation. And you were talking earlier how he, ha he does have a police record. Um, he saw him early in the morning. They approached him and he ran. We don't know if his leg got broken during the chase or when they tackled him, but it was obvious that his leg was broken once they caught up to him and once uh, somebody started doing the cell phone recording. But the family, they believe that his injuries were sustained while in the back of the police wagon. 
Right, and at that point, when you have somebody with a broken leg, that's when you should call an ambulance. Yes. You should, you know, put them in handcuffs. We saw in Round Rock when the, the cops smashed the lady's face on the ground in, in a, you know, he, was, he said she was drunk. She had some complaints, so he pulls up into the shopping center. Um, he doesn't think she's cooperating. He grabs her and slams her on the ground. Well, they called an ambulance for this lady, and she wasn't nearly as bad off as Freddie Gray was with the leg dangling and all that. I mean, you can obviously see he's got a broken leg, and at that point, that's when you call an ambulance and to, to take him, you know, you keep him in custody, but you take him to, to see how his injuries are. And they didn't do that. So we'll see if anything comes out of that. Frankly, I don't, I don't, I don't see the police officers investigating themselves thoroughly at all. And once again, the racial element is a huge factor drawing more attention from the mainstream media. There has been massive protest in Baltimore followed by widespread looting and arson. And this was all expected by the authorities, but for some reason, the Baltimore police, they were ordered to stand down. I mean, they were ordered not to stop the looters when the riots exploded over the weekend. I uh, worked with the police and instructed them to do everything that they could to make sure that the protesters were able to exercise their uh, right to free speech. Uh, it's a very delicate balancing act because while we uh, tried to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on, um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. That's what we call a stand down, ladies and gentlemen. You heard her right there. I mean, this is the true meaning of order out of chaos because yeah. right on cue, in walks, now we have the police state marching And the in. National Guard, and, mm -hmm. and, and the buildup happened faster than in Ferguson. It took them a few days to get the guys in, but this is what happens. The police pull back, they let the protesters go crazy, and then they show that on the cameras and they go, look, these people are going crazy. We need to send in people. And there's always the burning cop car. That's always the image that they show. Mm -hmm. You saw it there with the police van in, uh, uh, in Baltimore with the police van. But now here, look at this. This is Toronto, the G20. There's a, a protester there standing in front of that car. There's a whole story about how this police car caught fire. The police pull back and they leave the car sitting there. They just leave it sitting there in the middle of the road. And so protesters start attacking it. They light it on fire. And then the cops move in and, and start bashing people. Now, and they do this all the time. They did the same thing in Ferguson, and they did the same thing the other night. They put, in, in Maryland, in, in Baltimore, they put a line of police cars. They abandoned the police cars right there mm -hmm. in the middle of the riot zone. Right. And there's no police around to even watch to see what happens. So, but, but the mainstream all, media a, gets called in. Right. This is a tactic mm -hmm. that goes all the way back to the WTO in 1999 in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And what happened there was they, they were protesting. And the first day, they shut the city down. Peaceful protests shut down this World Trade Organization event. So the next day, these black box, box rioters, black box rioters, is what, uh, black box is what they're called, they show up. They, they were brought in. They were given a free building to stay in. They let them go crazy, and the cops pull back and just let them loot, mm -hmm. break windows, destroy things. They put it all on cameras. They attack some reporters. So the next day, then it's like, boom, we're locking down the city. Nobody gets to go anywhere. If you have a protest sticker on, a sticker or a pin, you weren't allowed into where the WTO was going, and they use that to, to really crack down on the protest. So this is a tech they use all the time. This isn't just one time. No, it's been every big incident they do this. Meanwhile, police in Baltimore are telling reporters that they were actually ordered to stand down, and it's, it's very puzzling, or is it? Because right. now come to find out, the mayor of Baltimore, she is one of only three mayors that are part of, just happen to be part of President Barack Obama's task force on 21st century policies, and this is a group that, wait for it, it advocates the federalization of our nation's police departments. Big surprise. This is a RAND Corporation plan that was written for the military to come in and fed, how to federalize the police to create a police st stabilization force. Yeah, destabilize so, the region, just like right. they do in, in third world countries, you know. They're doing exactly. it right here at home, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening right here. The police state isn't coming, it's already here. And on top of that, they are using these tactics of the police are the victims. You know, they're saying, oh, we're having rocks thrown at us, we're having this thrown at us. Well, they came out a couple days ago, Kurt Nemo did this article, Black Gorilla Family, the Bloods, the Crips, plan to take out Baltimore cops. And I'm going to read from the police department. It says, credible threat to law enforcement. Uh, the Baltimore Police Department has received credible information that members of various gangs, including the Black Gorilla Family, Bloods, and Crips, have entered into a partnership to take out law enforcement officers. This is a credible threat. 
They say it right there in their paperwork. Now, what, what they were doing was showing there was Twitter images of Bloods and Crips coming together along with this black guerrilla family. And they're all saying, look, we're coming together to stop the violence, stop the looting. At least that's what they say when they were interviewed by local TV. It was WBAL TV uh, Channel 11. The reporter there, uh, Deborah, she interviews some of the gang members. I want to go to the first clip here where they talk about how they were all, it was all mischaracterized what happened. So take a look at this, Darren. You haven't seen this clip yet, and then I want to get your comments on it. Right. That the image that they're trying to portray of the gangs in Baltimore, the BGF, the Bloods, the Crips, we did not make that truce to harm cops. We did not come together against the cops. We're not about to allow y'all to paint this picture of us. They saying we animals and we acting like savages out here. But I also agree with what's, I, I don't agree with what's going on, but I understand what's, what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I understand why people mad, but we got to handle things another way. We've been out here all day trying to stop, prevent people from breaking the stores. They hit us with a bomb. They burnt my shirt. They ripped it. And we were still standing right there as a whole. They heard it, but we came right back there, hold hands together, and we still, we marched together. So right there, you're getting a completely different picture from what the cops are saying. I got another clip to go to in a second, but what do you think of that right there? Just hearing those. Well, my first observation is that, that they'll tell you, okay, it's not on the mainstream television. That was on a local television station, right? They're right. not going to be playing that clip on Fox News or even on MSNBC. So that was a localized local station in, there in Baltimore? Yeah. Okay. And it's the same thing, and it reminds me of also another thing we're not seeing is there was plenty of, of uh, black folks out there that were actually guarding the police. Have you right. seen pictures of that? They yep. stood in front of the police. That's an article from Steve Watson today. Right. Pictures and footage you won't see on TV. Baltimore citizens are done with mindless rioters. And these guys live here. These gang members, they live here, and they decide, hey, we're going to have to come together, use our resources of, of being young men to stop what's going on, this looting, which always happens from outside sources. And, and I've got more on that coming up. Right. But it's just amazing that, you know, people try to come together to stop their violence in their communities without police help. They're saying, we're going to take care of ourselves. We're going to clean up after ourselves what, what these other people have done. And it's being labeled as a credible threat to law enforcement. And it makes you wonder how much uh, they're responsible for maybe the gang problems or, or just the mistrust between people. So I want to go to the mm -hmm. second clip where they talk about a famous incident that was all over Twitter, all over Facebook, and that's the picture. I'm going to go to it right here, um, and it, it's this this guy and this and this uh, these two guys squaring off against each other. And this is a, oh, yeah. a iconic image. This is right outside the Orioles Stadium, at right outside the bar. And the way it's being portrayed is that the black people started attacking the people at the bar, and now there there's a different story coming out. Uh, the city paper published a little bit different, but here's what they had to say. Here's what the young men that were there had to say. We are black men and we are united and we're not going to stop. No matter if y'all even keep on trying to say we out here trying to shoot police, we're not trying to shoot police. We're, going, we're not going to let that stop us from doing what we already originally planned to do. Stop, stop, stop believing everything you hear in the media. If you were, if you were not at that protest on, on the day that we protested for Freddie, you don't know what actually happened. They didn't tell y'all that when we, when we walked past the eateries downtown that people threw beers at us. Call people us, called us names. Us you know, everything. To be blunt, they called us those things. What we're trying, the point that we're trying to get across is that we are of a different faction. And what that's going to do is it start to show people in the community that we can come together as a unit and be unified and be peaceful. It was so much stuff that was going on on Saturday that got portrayed in the wrong direction or in the wrong light that for some reason, who knows, right, why they won't paint this picture in a positive way. Like when a group of 30 bloods walks up on a group of 30 crips and everybody salutes and shakes hands and hugs and starts to take pictures, but then the pictures that they take, they say, oh no, now they're uniting to kill cops. Like they won't tell you the, the good side of what we're really, really doing in these communities. So they're painting a completely different picture of that event mm -hmm. and the way the cops are portraying them is coming together to come and take out cops. I mean, it's just, it's totally ridiculous. This uh, city paper uh, writer, Brandon Soderberg said this. He said, when the protesters turned the corner uh, from Washington Boulevard from Camden Street, chanting Black Lives Matter, some baseball fans applauded. A few angry chanted back, we don't care. Someone who works at the bullpen confirmed this for me. He also said some patrons chanted, run them over and one yelled, go get them. Other protesters, including a city paper contributor and gang members interviewed by WBAL, 
Recall bar patrons calling them the N-word, among other racist epithets. Well, you're not going to hear about that because they want that picture to be seen. It's black versus white. Right. And they want a race oh, war. Oh, yeah. They do. And this justifies uh, the police state. This basically, this way they have a reason to justify the expansion of federal powers into the police force, and that's exactly what they're doing. This we is have by to show design, them how to take control of a city. Yep. That's what they're trying to show. Yep. And, and this goes even more to the police credibility. I want to share with you guys a tweet that came out. This was uh, 9.35 p.m. April 28th, 2015, Baltimore Police. A group of criminals have just started a fire outside a library located at Pennsylvania Avenue and North Avenue. Okay, less than nine minutes later, Joan Swain writes, fire beside Pratt Library was not caused by Molotov cocktail. Tear gas grenade landed on trash and its spark set the fire. How many times have we seen tear gas start fires? Just go back to Waco. Oh, the tear the gas they were using there, yep. burning up, mm -hmm. burning people up. Yeah, it's very um, dangerous. We saw that with the yeah. cop over in California when they pumped tear gas in there and they're saying, burn it down, burn it down. Yep. Tear gas is flammable. These yep. things are very flammable. So less than nine minutes later, this uh, reporter tweets that out. And, and you know, he says, I'm a reporter, and, and that's what he saw. But the cops portray it differently. Now, I want to go to an article from 2015 earlier this year. Baltimore drug, drug probe crumbles after court challenge. And this, it talks about many cases, but one about Devin Leroy Jones. Uh, prosecution crumbled when questions were raised in court about the inconsistencies in Lugio's search warrant application. After the detective acknowledged those inconsistencies, a federal judge expressed concern of the reckless disregard for the truth. That's a federal judge saying that. You can't get a federal judge to say anything on behalf of a defendant unless they're Totally moral, totally on the, the, the up and up. The next day, all the charges against Jones, Jones were dismissed, and he was freed. Jones' case was listed in records that the Baltimore Sun requested from the city, dealing with dozens of lawsuits filed against officers in 2013 and 14. The request came after a Sun investigation showed last fall the city had paid $5.7 million since 2011 in court judgments and settlements in lawsuits alleging police brutality and other misconduct. So maybe we should look at the Baltimore PD a little closely and going, you know, who's running your organization? Are you guys deliberately crumbling and, and becoming corrupt so you can be taken over by a federal police force? That's obviously the objective mm -hmm. that the mayor has set. Yeah. So maybe we should stop looking at the locals who live there who are cleaning up after the, after the other rioters. Uh, they're, they're doing all these other cleanup actions. They're standing in front uh, from Steve Watson, we got the, the pictures and footage you won't see on TV of the Baltimore citizens done with the mindless uh, rioters. And, and that's what we have to see more. We have to see more of this type of news come out because otherwise the, the, the wrong picture is getting portrayed. The picture is becoming that we have to lock down these cities. We have to control these people. And here's another article from uh, DC Clothesline, 12 unanswered questions about the Baltimore riots they don't want us to ask. And it talks about the staged events with the riots, which we talked about and how they were ordered to stand down. But I'll, I just want to go over a few of the questions. Why are dozens of social media accounts that were linked to violence in Ferguson are now trying to start violence in Baltimore? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Who was behind the aggressive social media campaign to organize a purge that would start uh, at, the, at the mall at precisely 3 p.m. on Monday afternoon? Even though authorities had credible intelligence, which they issued in that report, that gangs would be specifically targeting police officers on Monday, why weren't they more prepared? Okay, if they were expecting this, why weren't they beefed up? On Tuesday, the captain of the Baltimore police tried to make us believe they weren't prepared because they were only anticipating a confrontation with high schoolers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and like, like in Ferguson. Yeah. Exactly, here's, and here's number five. Why are police officers in, ba in Baltimore claiming that they were instructed to stand down during the rioting on Monday afternoon? That's a big question. You know, why, why are these stand downs being ordered? I don't think it's just so oh, we're going to let some people riot and, and get the anger out of their system. We don't let bank robbers go out and rob a couple banks to get it out of their system. Okay, it's wrong. They stood there and watched as buildings burn, as, yeah. as people's family shops burned to the ground, as you know, all those police cars got burnt. And, and, and now I, they've imposed this curfew, which is going to really economically hit the area. Absolutely. Anything open after 10 o'clock is going to be decimated for an entire week. And who knows, will this... What's going to happen in the aftermath? What's going to, you know, what forces are going to be left behind police wise? How militarized is it going to stay there for yeah. a while? And then when this police report comes out Friday, is that going to answer any questions? And by the way, they are calling this a state of emergency. I thought it was interesting that the, uh, the commander of the National Guard 
uh, she said that this is not martial law. Uh, we are going to be out in, in massive force, and that just basically means that we are going to be patrolling the streets and out to ensure that we're protecting property. We are in a supporting mode, so if there are any questions about martial law, this is not martial law. Martial law means that at that point the military fully takes over, so we are not at that point. I repeat, not at that point. We are in support of the police department, and we will be taking our direction from the police department as in where we're going to go out and support. So it's a state of emergency. It's not, not martial definitely law. Definitely not martial law. I mean, there's troops on the streets. There's They're MRAPs and tanks and the National Guard. You know? Locked and loaded. They got M4s. They got a curfew. Uh, the shops are closed. So it looks like martial law to me. But that doesn't mean martial law. It's just like when they say we come in peace and they start shooting. Oh, it's that. like an Orwellian term, state right. of emergency. I get right. you. Hey, by the way, InfoWars has boots on the ground in occupied Baltimore, Maryland right now as we take you to Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson, and they're going to show us what it looks like after order out of chaos. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen along with Rob Dew and we just got contacted by Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs who are there in occupied Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland, Maryland. and uh, we're going to go to that youth stream right now, and this is live, so let's go check it out. So right now we have thousands of people marching down here from Pennsylvania Station. All in protest of the Freddie Gray killing that happened here in the custody of Baltimore police. Now what you can see off of here are tons of home beef. Regular police, all those people are out here right now. As we come over this way, you'll see all the people coming in to this exact area. So far, we have been very welcome for being out here. It's been a uh, very peaceful day thus far. Yeah. And don't 
People are now lined up in the street. They've been marching for 2.1 miles. It is a rampant problem that has been happening here in America. And quite frankly, we saw it in Ferguson. We're seeing it here. People are pissed off and they want some kind of answer. They want some kind of justice and what that's going to be. We don't know yet. So far, it hasn't been the justice that anybody wants. But we're going to be out here. So it looks like the guys are about to embark on yet another great adventure. Should be interesting this evening. Right. It looks like there's a peaceful protest about to start there in the town hall area, the city hall area. And, um, it, you know, it's interesting the way we put people on the ground and they uh, get to talk. You, There's a video out there now. I don't, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but uh, Jakari and Joe run into a big, big, big InfoWars fan. Oh, he knows man. exactly who they are. He's yeah. really happy that they're there. Uh, well-dressed guys got it you know a shirt and tie on and just you know happy to see non mainstream media and that goes back to the old muck raking what you used to have with these big media outlets you used to have guys who would go in there and really dig for real stories and um, before we get off into this next uh, report I want to remind people you can go to ustream.tv forward slash Alex Jones live and they're going to be filing live reports all night on that Ustream channel, ustream.tv forward slash Alex Jones Live. That's the one channel. We have lots of channels on there, but that's the one they'll be using tonight. And I just think the Ustream thing is amazing. We've got, we've upped the quality on it. We've really taken it to the next level. We bought a really expensive piece of equipment that fits mm -hmm. on top of that camera, a Teradek. And it's really, you know, given the guys a great tool to go out and capture that immediacy because that is where the news is going. It's going to that immediate event, catching it, putting it out to people, letting other people share it around. That is how news is. That is where it's going. When when I used to go out a lot with Alex, it was funny, uh, um, onto these events and stuff. We would shoot a ton of video, and then we'd have to come back and edit it all. Mm. Now it's like that job doesn't almost need to be done anymore unless you really want to put a quality report together. Sure. But, but just being able to go out there and just kind of throw the media out. It's like throwing a bunch of stuff on the wall and seeing and, what And the sticks. word's getting out because these guys are yeah. getting recognized. Last time, Jakari Jackson, they recognized him in a subway in New yeah. York. Yeah. My God, it's InfoWars. And locally here in Austin, we get the same thing. But the more we venture to other states where, you know, all of us are being recognized, which says a lot about this organization. It says a lot about just how we're getting the truth out. It's, it's grassroots. It's, awesome. it's grassroots. Yeah. I remember going with Alex to New York when we were, he was going to take on Piers Morgan. And a security guard and a baggage handler each recognize Alex. They're like, thanks, thanks for coming to New York, Alex. Yeah. Thanks, you know. Yeah, forget about it. Alex is recognized you know, I everywhere. Mean, these yeah. guys, but it was like it was almost like a Fight Club moment where they were like, thanks for coming, Alex. You know, they they knew why he was there. And it's just amazing. But this goes back to this this whole muckraking thing, sure. where yeah. digging for real news, not just accepting what is being told to us by this corporate controlled, this big pharma funded this military industrial complex funded media that we have now, this, you know, rah-rah war machine. So John Bounce put together a report on why muckraking will never die. At least we hope it never dies. We hope it continues. And I think we're continuing that tradition here in InfoWars. So we're going to go to that report and then we'll be back. I've got some great fluoride news, some good news on the fluoride front. And we're going to share with you another report from Alex Jones about humanity's secret destiny revealed. So stay tuned for that. We'll be right back.
From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. On March 5th, 2014, Liz Wall resigned from her job at RT during a live broadcast. After this newscast, I'm resigning. According to truthdig.com, the entire incident was prior knowledge and supported by no less than James Kerchick a fellow of the neocon think tank known as the Foreign Policy Initiative. Inside the offices of the Foreign Policy Initiative, a staffer logged onto the group's Twitter account to announce the following. Hashtag word on the street says that something big might happen on RT in about 20 to 25 minutes. Then at 516, exactly 10 minutes before Wall would quit on air, FPI tweeted, Hashtag word on the street says you're really going to want to tune into RT. Something big may be going down. Up until two minutes before Wall's resignation, FPI took to Twitter again to urge its followers to tune in to RT. And finally, at 5.26 p.m. at the very moment Wall quit, FPI's Twitter account broke the news. RT anchor resigns on air. She cannot be part of a network that whitewashes the actions of Putin. The tweets from FPI suggested a direct level of coordination between Wall and the neoconservative think tank. Just over an hour later, an exclusive interview with Wall appeared at the Daily Beast. It was authored by James Kerchick. Kerchick wrote that by quitting, Wall paid the price real reporters, not Russian government-funded propagandists, have to pay if they're concerned with quaint notions like objectivity and the truth. With the recent legalization of a no-holds-barred propaganda movement aimed at the American public, This is the Voice of America, Washington, D.C., signing on. David Esnor is given the task of retrofitting the decrepit Voice of America and transforming it into a powerhouse 24-hour propaganda news network. When I was on your show two and a half years ago, three years ago, I used to tell you about the fact that we did the show. We shared a studio with Voice of America. Uh, they were having trouble competing with RT and Press TV, and I was doing a show on both of those networks. And Voice of America was, you know, coming on to me saying, "You got to work for Voice of America. Come on over to Voice of America." And I said, "No, you know, you guys are just propaganda." And then uh, the offers started to come in for money. Uh, the amounts of money started to get bigger. And I kept saying, no, no, you guys are propaganda. You don't get it. I do news. You guys are propaganda. And then, you know, I started hearing about these, our correspondents at RT being approached by,
by Voice of America and these other folks like the Broadcasting Board of Governor folks. And then before you know it, this Liz Wall thing went down. I can only imagine the numbers they were thro- they threw at her. Sure. Did you see the RT reporter that you're talking about who, who did that whole stage thing that she quit? testifying before Congress, we played it last week, saying they, they basically asked, get rid of free speech and that and that evil alternative media must be stopped? They, they asked me to do that. Wait a minute. That, you're breaking, you're breaking major that. news. You're saying you were approached to do a staged defection from RT. Yeah. And they would say, you know what? You, you should be a patriot. You shouldn't be doing RT or press TV. You need to be doing Voice of America. And I said, no, you guys are pure propaganda. Eventually, they found a weak link in the chain, somebody to to take money, ruin their career, flush their career down the toilet, and and now she's scrambling. Uh, I know. These journalists it. like Armstrong Williams that people don't get, you sell out, you get caught, you, you've destroyed yourself. I, I just... <laughs> it's, a, it's a real smack in the face to you know actual journalists who are dying out there doing real journalism. Uh, Michael Hastings, for example, who was killed by the Pentagon doing journalism. You know, in his memory, this, this Liz Wall you know, sells out to, to propagandists. It, it's uh, sad. It's a sad day. Liz Wall got swept up in the arms of the slothful and American propaganda I movement think you had failed. mentioned that it provides this voice for, for fringe voices, extremists, and it works because it provides uh, a place for these people, a place where these people can congregate and feed off of each other's biases, uh, it, it's almost like a community that is almost like a cult, I would say, that is formed uh, online and they mobilize and they they feel like they are part of some enlightened um, fight against the establishment. They find an outlet where they can where they can um, a platform to to voice their deranged views. Uh, Mr. Lack, who has has since departed, had gotten a lot of uh, criticism for comparing. Russia today and Russian propaganda to to ISIS propaganda. Um, and, and while yes, there there is a strong difference. We're talking about a terrorist organization versus a, a government, uh, you know, a nation state. I think he did have credence in in comparing the strat- strategy that's there by using the internet to mobilize people that feel displaced, that feel like they've been on the outskirts of society, and give them a place where they can find a sense of belonging. They are um, shaping the discussion online, on message boards, on Twitter, on social media. But unfortunately, it's provided a forum where disinformation, false theories, uh, people that are just trying to make a name for themselves, bloggers or whatever, that have absolutely no accountability for the truth, are able to rile up a mass amount of people online. In retrospect of Ms. Wall's testimony, let's make something abundantly clear. Bloggers, journalists, and regular citizens pointing out faults in the overreaching power grab by government and corporations is nothing new. Ida Tarbell, one of the founders of the muckraking movement and the creator of investigative journalism, started the snowball back in 1900 when she went after the seemingly untouchable Rockefellers and Standard Oil, using irrefutable documents to back up all of her claims. No different than what you see here at InfoWars today. So call us a cult, call us conspiracy theorists, but make no mistake, Ms. Wall, we know what you are. And you don't even have the journalistic integrity required to sharpen Ms. Tarbell's pencil. John Bound, InfoWars.com. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security by sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. You watch the assault regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Be 
become a member, share your membership, and help take the info war to the next level. All right, so I understand we have good news for the future of our nation's children as the government has finally decided to at least lower the fluoride level somewhat, what, by half, I take it? Is that good news? Or, I mean, I guess we'll take what we can get. It's not quite half, but it's getting better. It's getting right. better than what it was. Um, this has came out today. We posted it, well, it came out April 27th. U.S. lowers fluoride levels in drinking water for first time in over 50 years. We posted it off the Associated Press. Links back to a Guardian article. And uh, in 1962, the government had been advising water systems to add fluoride to a level of 0.7 parts per million for warmer climates because people drink more water and they've recognized that you're putting more fluoride into your body and that's not necessarily a good thing in warmer climates, where it was 1.2 parts per million in cooler areas. The new standard is now 0.7 everywhere. So we didn't get our fluoride lowered at all. That's what they, that's what they keep it at, mm. sorry to say. But... Um, it's getting better. And guys, roll some of this footage of what, what I shot. I actually shot this with a hidden camera at a fluoride treatment plant, a water treatment plant. I keep calling it a fluoride treatment plant because they are treating our water with fluoride. Yeah, it's yeah, no it's doubt totally about disgusting. It. Okay, so here is, this is one's over by Redbud Isle, this fluoride treatment plant, this water treatment plant where they do millions of gallons of water. Uh, this was all done, a, a camera being held by my side. Mm -hmm. And here is the area where they actually hook up the, these fluoride vehicles show up in giant tankers and they hook up the fluoride right there. And if you notice, look at the area below, you can see it's kind of powdery, the concrete there, you can see where it stains it. And really, I mean, that's, it's destroying the concrete. Well, we right see there. what would happen if they were to spill that stuff, because wasn't it in well, Minneapolis what or this somewhere? this is doing to the inside yeah. of your body. That's horrible. Okay, and now you can see where the fluoride's all going. It goes to a separate room, completely separate from the, the rest of the facility. Okay, and here it goes back to this room back here. And you can see on the door, it's got an MSDS rating. I'm going to pan up here. Three, okay, which is really bad for humans. But it's not the worst. Four is the worst, okay? But watch what happens when we go inside. You can see where they keep it in these big plastic tanks. There it says, do not drink the water. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> there, there we are. We see the purple uh, tubes running again. But look behind her. You can see it's the MSDS of four, and it says hydrofluorosilicic acid on the side. There it is, four. Yep. That is the worst MSDS rating for human reactivity, okay? It will cause death if you're in there. That's why they keep this stuff all by itself. If these tanks were to be ruptured or explode, they, it would then collect in that bricked-in area, but it would probably leak out and be an environmental hazard. Okay, but there you see it, MSDS of four. And they're doing all this because they're concerned about our teeth. Yeah, they put nine gallons an hour <laughs> into the water supply there, nine gallons of this fluoride, this toxic waste byproduct that they get from uh, phosphate fertilizer companies, yeah. and they put that in our water. Truly, truly, truly disgusting. Now, it says in this article, back at the Guardian article, 75% of Americans get fluoridated water. Yay. The change announced Monday finalizes a proposal first made four years ago. Hey, real quick, what's that compared to... Europe, for example. I mean, it's hardly, a lot lower in Europe. There's lot not too many people that, yep. that do it in Europe anymore. They've decided that it's not good for you. Yeah, they're they're a, a lot ahead of us in some ways, but uh, I think socially they're they're into this big socialism thing. But for some reason, they're not into fluoride, which is interesting that we are. The government spent years sorting through and responding to the 19,000 public comments. So four years, 19,000 comments later, they lower the ratings for the people in northern climates, and that's to get. Uh, to get them evened out. But they, you know, they still say too much fluoride is a common cause of white splotches and streaks on your teeth. I've got those streaks on my teeth. I was drinking Florida, Florida water when I was a kid, mm -hmm. out of the tap, out of the garden hose, you know, just drinking water. And uh, so I have uh, what they call it as fluorosis. Now, fluoride causes all kinds of other problems other than white splotches on the teeth. They want you to think it's just white splotches. It's yep. not for white splotches. Here's an, uh, a report David Knight put together. Fat, stupid, and depressed fluoride side effects. He, he put this out February 25th. It also it, it has thyroid disorders, obesity, depression. There's other diseases, loss of IQ. I have a, a graphic right here that shows uh, the different news outlets that reported that fluoride causes cancer. Okay, and they know this, yet they Harvard still put studies. it in our okay. drinking water. Yeah, they still put it in there. Yep. So that, I want you to, I, I want people to also go check this video out. This is a video we put out a few years ago in 2010. Professor 
Paul Connett. He had, we put out this, oh, it's nearly an hour, talking about fluoride. If you really want to get all the information on fluoride, go watch this video. Yeah. 59 minutes. It's got 152,000 views. It's on our sister channel, The Info Warrior. And it's Professor Paul Connett, your toxic tap water. And today, remember Alex had Mr. Dave Breckler on the show, Mr. Vitamin, mm -hmm. the kind of the guy behind the big vitamin industry uh, going on here, and, and the high-quality vitamins, not the low-quality vitamins that you get in the, the natural these. vitamins. Exactly, mm -hmm. big uh, difference. Anyway, we had we we did a special presentation that we just put together today after he was on Alex's show. We we took him into the other studio, and he talked about uh, the flu vaccine, how it says it doesn't really work for the flu, which, which we've told people that many times, over and over. He again. reads it off the insert. Uh, it gives a little bit of background information on himself and then how this big pharma ruse happened, how they suddenly became into power, how they used all this trickery to get uh, osteopaths and homeopaths out of business so then they become the main, the big dog on the street. And that's why we live under this system where you go to a doctor, you get a prescription drug. So McBrain, let's, let's go to that video now and keep educating people on why it's good to be healthy in this world. That's right, it's what we do. Hi, this is Dave Breckler, The Vitamin Guy. I've been in the vitamin industry for over 20 years. I work with most of the major manufacturers and we've been selling vitamins into all the major outlets uh, in America and overseas now. And we're consulting InfoWars on their product selection and the quality of their products. I've been on InfoWars radio program today and I wanted to come back and talk about a couple of the subjects we touched today. Uh, we talked a little bit about how Big Pharma got started originally. At the turn of the century, there was allopathic medicine, homeopathic medicine, and there was also uh, osteopathic medicine. But some of the big money people, like the Carnegie family, went around the country and organized all of the doctors that were practicing allopathic medicine and ended up going getting just allopathic medicine for the country. So they've successfully repressed most of the alternative medicines. They've come out mostly with allopathic medicine. They built the medical schools and they funded all the drug research and the drug Big Pharma. So now we're stuck with the result of that, which is Big Pharma medications for most people. And today on the show, we talked about the flu vaccine. And I have now the uh, printout from the flu vaccine from Fluval. And this is the actual insert that they put inside of the flu vaccine. And I'll quote right from here, it says, there have been no controlled trials adequately demonstrating a decrease in influenza after vaccination with the flu vaccine, this Fluval. So here it is right in the insert itself, they're telling you that it's not effective. So I don't know how much more plain that, you know, that could be. And uh, we were been telling everybody today, you have to take responsibility for your own health. You have to stay healthy. You have to eat good, good food drink pure water, get exercise, take your supplements, take charge of your own health, because you can't expect Big Pharma or your doctor to do it for you. And one thing to do when you're looking for supplements, be sure you go with brands that you trust, name brand, big brands, especially the InfoWars, it's the highest quality products on the market, because all the supplements aren't the same. You wanna make sure you're getting high quality, clean products, and InfoWars is a great place to do that. This is Dave Breckler, The Vitamin Guy. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 
the knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. All right, we're back, and I guess we have another video. This one is from Alex Jones earlier today, and this is a little bit of a different look. Of Alex, uh, kind of a positive look. He mentioned that today on the radio. He said he wants to start doing more positive messages. And I know this is something he harps on a lot. He wants us to do more positive stuff because we do cover a lot of negative things that are Doom going on. Doom and gloom and a lot of because stuff that's deep in the rabbit hole. Those things aren't being covered. Yeah. You know, that's why we cover them. But he's he wants to start doing more positive stuff, and he's encouraging us to do more positive stuff. Um, I, I try to point out funny ways people protest things. I did, I did one on uh, on the Common Core homework a few yeah, was, weeks ago where good. this lady wrote a note on the child's homework and says, don't send this crap home to us anymore about vaccines or you know whatever they were teaching at that time. But here's one. It's called Humanity's Secret Destiny Revealed. We just put it up today. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to read about it. Alex Jones reveals the secret to stepping outside the box and releasing humanity's true potential. As the globalists and social engineers attempt to shutter our minds and stifle our creativity... It is up to us to break the chains of collectivism and take humanity to the next level. And that's what we're doing here, right? I mean, people buying Prison Planet TV memberships help us take humanity to the next level where we can put out more positive information, more empowering information. That's right. You know, I mean, that's that's what it's all about for me. Yeah. And by the way, if you're watching this, if you happen to catch this video on YouTube, we're like, what, 2,000 subscriptions close now to 1 million subscribers. Yeah, we've almost yeah. hit that milestone. Yeah. Everybody's talking about it. I've yeah. been watching it rise up steadily since I first got here and started mm -hmm. really putting up a lot of videos on YouTube. And, um, I mean, it's just amazing, the amount of videos. It, it's obscene. We're into billions of minutes watched. I mean, it's yeah. I can't even fathom how big and how important that YouTube channel is. And that's just one of them. We have other YouTube Probably. channels which have longer videos on them. Before we got the director's count on that one, we had a director's count on the Info Warrior, and so we have a lot of big stuff there. So, you know, get out there, become subscribers to those channels. Become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. That's a great way to help us. It's $5.95 a month. You can share your username and password with up to 20 people. That's right. So that's 20 Info Warriors for the price of one. And uh, with that, I guess we're going to go to uh, Alex's message, uh, Humanity's Secret Destiny Revealed, and... Uh, Darren, this is a good little co-hosting bit we did here. Yeah, that was like fun. This. It was yeah, a lot of fun. So we'll do it again. We'll start doing these a few more, maybe a couple times a month. We'll get on here and uh, and do this. So thanks for joining us on this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm uh, co-host Rob Dew. I'm Darren McBreen. And we'll see you next time, 7 p.m. Central. All right. Have you ever just paused for a moment and turned off the television and put away People Magazine to look around you and realize where we are on this beautiful planet, hurtling through space, orbiting the sun, out on the edge of a spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. Because that simple thought, that simple moment of pulling back and getting outside the box, of coming out of the cave into the wider world, has helped me and many others realize how pathetic the global social engineers really are who would attempt to shudder the psyches, the minds, the creativity of the people even more. I look at the messages put out by Hollywood and mainstream media about how ugly we are, about how dumb we are, about how bad we are, how we're a disease on the face of the world and how we've got to be exterminated. That's a bunch of greedy, hateful control freaks who are envious of beautiful and smart people who wish to set themselves up as gods 
in some type of high-tech nightmare world. I'm here as a 21st century Paul Revere telling you I believe in you. But beyond believing in you, at a cellular level, I know how powerful you are when you realize the true destiny of humanity. And when you understand that you are the heirs of all the humans that came before us that did incredible things to bring us to this point. They say necessity is the mother of invention. We have the necessity to defeat the new world order, the globalists, the eugenicists, the social engineers that are waging war on our people worldwide. Whether you are old, young, and no matter what color your skin is, we are all brothers and sisters in this human quest going back tens of thousands of years. I don't want us to fail now because a small group of predators learned how we worked and then launched a war against their own species so they could greedily control the entire future destiny. I want the compendium, the great mass of humanity, with our ideas and with our competition and with our loves and passions to decide the future in an open, free society. Not one based on lies, not one based on fraud, but based on love of humanity and free will. You have the power. You are incredible creatures. You are the heirs of this amazing genetic treasure trove of struggle. Let's not just let humanity survive, Let's build on what we've already done and make our ancestors proud because they are watching today. They are inside of us. Every cell, every genetic memory, we are all those that came before us and we will live forever through our progeny into the future. But make no mistake, there is an epic war, an incredible battle over the future of our species happening right now. You don't want to sit on the sidelines. You don't want to sit in the middle of the road. You want to choose sides wisely. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.